Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video covering the AQA GCSE Computer Science course. Uh, we're looking at topic number 17 today, which is all about networking. Um, so unfortunately we've got to define a few terms that um, are not only used for this topic, but for the topics coming up. So first, let's look at what a computer network is. So it's basically two or more computers connected through a communication medium. So that term, uh, communication medium, may be unfamiliar to you, um, but don't fear, all it means is it's basically the physical connection between um, the network. Um, so the connection between the network, um, e.g. Um, e a cable. It can be as simple as a cable or it could be a wireless signal. Okay. Um, so let's have a so the purpose of networks um, it's to send and receive data between computers and um, it allows computers to use the resources connected in other places so a resource in this context is purely a just a another device other than a uh, standard computer e.g. a printer so usually peripheral devices um, that can be used um, over the network um, so we've got to define a few terms like I mentioned so a server is a computer slash multiple computers that provide the services to any other computers in the network, which are the clients. So obviously a client, the definition of a client would be a computer slash many computers um, that uses the service that the servers provide. So um, fairly simple, server provides the services, client uses the services. Um, the user is just a person, whereas a client and server are um, sort of computers. A user is a person that uses a client to access resources on the network, so printers, um, other peripheral devices. Um, a protocol slightly harder. This is um, a protocol is basically it consists of written rules used for the network communication. So many of these are used, um, and they use depending on what actually type of communication is occurring. So, for example, would be IP. Um, a lot of us, a lot of people who know about computers, will know roughly what an IP address is, or they've heard of it before. So, IP stands for Internet Protocol. And the rules in this protocol basically allow data to be sent to the correct address. The rules make sure this happens, um, and this protocol be used when sending any data to an internet source or another computer. Um, so we've got to know some advantages and some disadvantages for using computer networks. So an advantage is that because you're sharing the resources, um, it saves money because you don't need to buy multiple uh, devices. Um, you can use just you can use just one on the network. Um, also, security is improved as users cannot see each other's files on the network. Whereas if they all use the same machine, then they can potentially access each other's files. So on a network, you can't you can't just control another computer. Um, the files are going to be sent to each other um, manually or automatically, but um, the, the person has to actually have control of it. Um, whereas, of course, if you're only using one computer, then the files are all going to be stored on a hard drive so they can all be accessed um, easy, easily. Um, another advantage is that data is easily backed up as it is all stored on the file server. Um, a disadvantage is that um, you've, got, you've got to purchase the cables, the, commu uh, the communications media, um, and that's quite expensive usually, um, depending on the amount of cabling or um, the, the type of connection you're using. Um, also, managing a large network is fairly complicated, so often you need specialist training to, to be able to do it. Um, and finally, hackers and viruses can both infiltrate the network a lot more easily when they're connected. Um, for example, if a hacker can gain access to one computer, often they'll be able to gain access to all of them. Uh, same with viruses, um, so, so therefore um, security can be a bit, um, uh, well, there's, there's less security essentially, so um, more steps have to be taken to um, secure the network. Um, so unfortunately I've got one of my uh, things appearing too early, but for, we're going to look at a few um, types of network topology. So a topology is essentially a network configuration, the layout of a network. Um, so in the bus topology network configuration, all of the client servers, sorry, all of the client servers and resources are connected to one cable, the bus. So you can see um, this this long communication media medium here, um, usually a cable. So uh, by the way, a terminator. I don't. I would assume you don't need to know this, but a terminator basically stops this signal is going back and forth constantly 
once it got, once the signal reaches the terminator, it basically stops. Um, so when a device communicates, communicates, the message is transmitted down the bus for all the devices received. So, for example, if this workstation sends a message, it goes up and down the bus. And every single device on the uh, connected to the network will be able to see the, see the data that's being sent, um, but only the actual intended recipient accepts and processes the message. Um, so all of them see it, but only one of them will actually do anything about it. Um, so again, we're going to look at advantages and disadvantages. So an advantage is that it's cheap and easy to install, as only a short quantity of cable is needed. We're going to look at two other topology arrangements. Um, two of the topologies, and um, this is this requires the least amount of cable. It's only one real cable, and this is just little bits of cable that are attached to it. Um, so it's uh, cheap and easy to install. So good for for smaller scale operations. However, um, if the bus fails, the cable fails, then the whole network will fail to communicate. Because if if this stops working, then none of them will be able to transmit information to each other. Um, again, well, not again, but um, another reason why it's suited to smaller scale operations is that as more workstations are added the performance of the network will decrease because um, data will collide, it goes up and down, it gets in its way, it's, it's like a highway the more cars you have on a highway the busier it gets and the longer it will take to reach the workstations um, so you, this is ideal for a smaller amount of um, devices and um, another disadvantage is that all the workstations see all of the data so there's a bit of a security slash privacy risk in that regard. Um, now we're going to look at another topology um, this is called the ring topology um, and you can see uh, why they call it that um, uh, so in this topology each device is connected to two other devices you can see otherwise it wouldn't actually form a ring obviously so there's always a complete ring in this um, and the messages travel around in one direction around this ring and um, it basically so for example if this workstation sent a message and it was trying to send it to this printer uh, this works it, so and if it's going in a clockwise um, direction it would go to go up here to this workstation this workstation would see it so would this workstation and then the message will be accepted by the printer and then it, but it won't be seen by this workstation or this server so it will go that way. So it's not seen by all devices like the um, bus topology, but it's seen by most of them usually, unless it's right next to each other. Um, so advantages, um, data is transferred quickly, as because data only flows in one direction, um, there's no chance of any data collisions. Um, however, if any of the cable fails or a device is faulty, the whole network will fail. Obviously, if a message tries to go through a device that's damaged or goes through a section of cable it, that is damaged, the message will never actually reach the intended um, recipient. Um, another disadvantage is that I sort of mentioned this, but obviously the workstations do see data not intended for them, um, so there's another privacy risk. Um, and finally, we'll look at the star topology. Um, this is probably the most common um, in a in a home scenario. Um, you know, if you have many um, computers, laptops, um, uh, phones, and stuff. It will be um, connected like this. Um, so it, it basically has a central connection point, usually a hub, switch, or router. Um, and you can see, instead of being in a star, they're connected individually. The devices, the workstations are connected individually to this central focal point. Um, so they're not connected to each other. They have to go through this to get to each other, um, which has more advantages than the others, but um, quite big disadvantages and they're quite reliable as if one cable or device fails so for example if this workstation failed or this cable failed um, the workstation wouldn't be affected obviously they couldn't send any data to this workstation but their data um, communications would not be affected with any of the other devices um, they're also high performing so the data is transferred quicker, uh, quickly because again no data collisions occur Unfortunately, um, they are expensive to install because a lot more cabling is required. If you think of this, it's not just going to be one, two, three, four, five devices. It could be many, 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 um, and lots of cabling will be required. Um, and obviously, you need the extra hardware as the hub or the switch in the central in the center, which you probably would have to buy fairly quite it'd be quite expensive. And um, obviously, if the central device then fails the whole network will fail as well because everything needs to go through this and if that doesn't exist then the network will not exist. Quite a big disadvantage there but the advantages do make it very popular. Um, so that's it for today's video, thanks a lot for watching um, be sure to check out the future videos on similar um, 
similar sort of topics. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.